Hi, my name is David Hildebrand, and this is my presentation on carbon nanostructures. Uh, a little bit about myself, I'm originally from Maryland, but I currently live in Fort Worth, Texas, where I work as a systems engineer for Lockheed Martin Aeronautics on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Um, since my job is fairly stressful, I tend to relieve some stress by racing sport bikes, and uh, tend to have a little bit too much fun. Okay, so what are carbon nanotubes? They're scientifically engineered structures where scientists take two carbon rods, one with a positive charge and one with a negative charge, and they induce about a 20 volt uh, voltage across the rods, which leaves a slight carbon or graphite uh, residue on the negative negatively charged rod. Uh, this is the basic concept of anode and cathode. Um, carbon or graphite is actually uh, fundamentally flat, um, but what happens is in the residue the deposits form tubes or cones or uh, even cups. Um, there's no real uniform structure, but Right now, they're trying to engineer ways to make sure that the residue appears fairly uniform. Uh, the benefits of the tubular structure are that it has unparalleled thermal conductivity. Um, in other words, it can rapidly get rid of heat. Uh, there's very little thermal expansion. In other words, as it's heated, it tends not to expand at all as long as the it's heated along its axis. Um, if you try to heat a month along its circumference, um, it only expands a very tiny bit. Uh, this material is much stronger than steel, um, yet you can still uh, flex it almost exactly like rubber. Um, another benefit is since it is carbon or graphite, um, it absorbs a very wide spectrum of light waves. Um, this new substance, graphene, is by far the strongest material ever found. Um, there's really four main ways that this material is being used. Uh, that's in medical arenas, um, construction, uh, ways to make integrated circuits smaller and faster, and in stealth coding. All right, and X-rays, what they're finding is that they can um, introduce these carbon nanotubes and they're able to view through a, a near-infrared spectrometer um, what's going on behind organs so there's no hidden spaces. Um, also, since there's no need to heat anything up or uh, process an image, um, everything gets done instantaneously. Um, on the cancer side of uh, medicine, they're using carbon nanotubes as a host to introduce drugs directly onto affected cells and tissue. Uh, when they place these nanotubes near these cancer cells and they introduce a small current, the nanotubes vibrate and actually completely eliminate the cancer cells. Um, as far as structural applications, um, it is carbon, similar to carbon fiber, but much, much stronger down to the molecular level. Um, what they're finding is they can introduce these carbon nanotubes into a varnish or a paint, and they can paint bridges or buildings um, with this carbon nanotube varnish, and using a inf near-infrared spectrometer, um, the carbon nanotubes give off different color wavelengths depending on the amount of stress or strain that they're under, uh, which is much better than um, gluing on or bolting on um, some sort of a sensor to measure strain or stress. Um, also, these carbon nanotubes are creating incredibly strong joints uh, in carbon. Uh, on the area of integrated circuits or electronics, um, because their thermal conductivity is so great, 
um, they've been able to create the smallest transistor, which you can see in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Uh, it's only one atom thick and 10 atoms wide. Um, one of the downfalls of creating smaller electronic devices is the amount of heat involved. Um, you have to really watch the amount of current or voltage that you send through such a small component. But since nanotubes have excellent thermal conductivity, uh, you can actually put 10 times the amount of power through the same area um, that you would on a, a copper uh, made integrated circuit. Um, also, carbon nanotubes can carry the same amperage as well um, in the same area. But again, they weigh one sixth the weight of copper, so you can really make them a lot smaller and a lot lighter. Uh, just to compare thermal conductivity, if you look at the chart on the left about carbon nanotubes, um, you can see that it's in nanowatts per uh, degree of Kelvin, so the scale is going to look different. However, you can see that even at very cold temperatures and very hot temperatures, the thermal conductance is very good. Um, whereas with copper, um, when it's cold, the thermal conductivity is good. Um, however, as copper is heated and the electrons um, disperse, the thermal conductivity uh, goes down pretty rapidly. All right, now in the area of stealth technology where I work uh, mostly, uh, nanotor nanotubes are found to absorb a very broad spectrum of wavelengths. Now that includes visible light um, and in the area of radar. Um, they have absolutely no color. They're pure black. These are carbon. It's almost like graphite from a pencil, but much, much stronger. Um, what they've recently found is that they can manufacture these and scientifically engineer these nanotubes to have the same light absorption and thermal conductivity as surrounding air. So if the air has the same thermal and light values as the surrounding environment, the aircraft theoretically disappears. Now this also goes for boats and water as well. So pretty much any object can basically disappear on any infrared scope. Uh, the downfall is that the objects that get these nanotubes have to be very resilient to high pressures and high heats uh, because it does take an incredible amount of heat and pressure to really manufacture these nanotubes in a controlled environment. Alright, so uh, just some questions that I threw out there at the end. Um, how much greater is the thermal conductivity of carbon nanotubes versus copper? Um, Carbon nanotubes actually have 10 times the thermal conductivity of copper. Uh, they definitely do not uh, heat up as much. Uh, what makes carbon nanotubes so revolutionary? Um, their thermal conductivity, as mentioned before, they're so small and flexible, yet they're so incredibly strong. Uh, graphene, which is the technical name for uh, most of the carbon nanotubes, has been found to be the strongest material ever found. Alright, so my name is David Hildebrand and this is my presentation on carbon nanostructure.